Before I get to the casting couch, as my friend Sean called it in my Illusion review, in which I present my choices of who should play the book's characters in a future film adaptation, let me briefly talk about imagination and the role it plays in reading. I, like a lot of people, visualize what I read. I see what's being described and hear the text in my head as I read, and the characters have appearances and voices in my head based on their descriptions and what fits. On a related note, I often, though not exclusively, think using audible words in my head, and the voice I hear varies frequently based on what interests me or what caught my attention at the time. For instance, as I wrote these two sentences, the voice in my head took on that of David Mitchell's obtuse CEO character in the Get Me Hennemore skits. I'm very excited about taking our first step into the space age. This could revolutionize how quickly we work out our payroll here at Tempranillo Gaps. I find it interesting that other media and culture I consume will often inform and influence how I visualize a given novel I'm reading. If I've seen the film adaptation of a novel, my brain will naturally envision the characters in the form of their on-screen actors. I did this with Cloud Atlas, having seen the film first, but with one big difference. Instead of Jim Broadbent, I imagined hapless publisher Timothy Cavendish being played by Sylvester McCoy. I was a big fan of the Artemis Fowl novels during mid-high school. I always imagined LEP recon officer Holly Short as having the voice of Don French. I don't know why, but it just fit. In around year 10, I also read Jupiter by Ben Bova and a bunch of Dan Brown novels. Since I was watching the Ghost in the Shell standalone complex TV series at the time, I imagined Dr. Lee Zhang Wo, the crippled director of the Gold Space Station orbiting Jupiter, as resembling Arumaki, the director of Section 9 in the anime. When I read Angels and Demons a little later, the similarly paraplegic director of CERN, Maximilian Kohler, ended up looking in my head like Dr. Wo and by extension Aramaki, and therefore Asian, despite his name implying him to be a German of Jewish descent. I often conjure music to accompany a scene I'm reading. I discovered the amazing DC graphic novel Adam Strange Planet Heist in 2007, when Godzilla Final Wars was finally released in Australia, and Keith Emerson's bombastic, electronica-heavy score fit the graphic novel's battle scenes perfectly. All the Birds in the Sky, by Charlie Jane Anders, is one of the best novels I've ever read. It's poignant and sometimes apocalyptically grim, yet funny and uplifting, the pacing is flawless, it's inexhaustibly inventive, and has incredibly deep, well-realized characters. I don't remember who I envisioned as Lawrence, a maverick tech genius and the novel's sci-fi protagonist, but I distinctly remember Patricia, a powerful hippie-style witch and the novel's fantasy protagonist, as looking like Michaela Pascal from Teens React, as I was watching a lot of React channel content at the time, and Michaela kind of fits Patricia's tall, dark-haired attractiveness and her air of confidence and casual yet rough-edged wisdom. Now, Theodophanus Rose, an elite assassin convinced that Lawrence or Patricia, or both, will bring on Armageddon, looked and sounded exactly like Agent 47 in my head. Ernesto, a kindly mentor of Patricia with a strange plant-growing curse on his person, was played by Jeremy Irons in my head, and Milton Dirth, Lawrence's boss during the construction of a trans-dimensional gate, looked like Hugh Laurie in my head. Before I begin the cast list for The Massacre of Mankind, let me briefly mention how my tastes and interests colored and populated my perception of this novel's unfolding events. The Martians' tripod fighting machines, as I envisioned them, gave off the trumpety boom they made in the 2005 Spielberg film, but also emitted more organic chirps and moans like the combine tripods in Half-Life 2. And you'd better believe the fighting machine's Ula battle cry sounded like it does in Jeff Wayne's musical version of The War of the Worlds, which, after the last note in God's Magnum Opus by Schizoid Lloyd, is my favorite album ever. The fighting machine's deadly heat ray sounded like the Dalek's death ray, and the human artillery cannons sounded like the cannons used against Godzilla in Godzilla 2000. This sound effect is what I think of when I think of cannons, just as guns sounded, in my imagination, like a bullet time Desert Eagle due to the Matrix for years when I was a teenager. Now, onto the cast. As Julie Elphinstone, the protagonist, I would cast Oscar nominee Carrie Mulligan. She is an immensely versatile and dignified actress, and would take to the role with sensitive pathos and strong-willed conviction. For Walter Jenkins, my mind naturally went to Richard Burton, the narrator of Jeff Wayne's album, but of course, he's dead. Instead, since Walter Jenkins is essentially a fictionalized version of H.G. Wells, I would cast Michael Sheen as Walter, as I remember Sheen being fantastic as Wells in The War of the Words, a docudrama about Wells' life. 
Or, if you want to get really meta with this author insert role, cast Stephen Baxter as Walter. For Frank Jenkins, Walter's brother and Julie's ex-husband, my mind again portrayed him with an actor no longer with us, in this case Nicholas Courtney, who played Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart in Doctor Who. As for a living actor, who looks like he could be plausibly related to Michael Sheen, I would cast Andy Serkis. As Verity Bliss, a brave VAD in a World War I reminiscent battlefield setting, I would cast Ruth Bradley, who voiced Molly O'Sullivan, a World War I VAD and the Eighth Doctor's companion in the big Finnish audio dramas Dark Eyes 1 and 2. For the role of Major Eric Eden, a charismatic, amiable leader who can be disturbingly callous and manipulative, I would cast Toby Jones, a highly accomplished camera director who played, most recently, one of the antagonists in Series 4 of Sherlock, and has had a couple of roles in Doctor Who, including in Dark Eyes alongside Bradley. As Harry Kane, a brash journalist and friend of Julie from Manhattan, I would cast Nicholas Holt. As Marigold Rafferty, an associate of Harry during the invasion of Manhattan, and eventually his wife, I would cast Tuppence Middleton, as she has an old-fashioned charisma befitting the novel's 1920s time period, and she missed out on a role during my last casting exercise. For the role of Captain Woodward, a wry, indomitable soldier on leave who accompanies Harry and Marigold during the Manhattan invasion, Sir Anthony Hopkins's manic, grimly elated warrior persona in Coppola's Dracula felt perfect. But if we must use an American actor, although Verity isn't Irish, but I still cast the Irish Ruth Bradley in the role, I would pick Michael Shannon or Malcolm McDowell, as both actors have an intense, formidable screen presence. This isn't as exhaustive a list as my cast for Illusion, as The Massacre of Mankind has fewer characters, and fewer memorable characters. Still, I hope you enjoyed this brief rundown of my cast for a Massacre of Mankind movie. Thanks for watching. Cheers.